landed next to the shelter they were using as both a demonstration. Hey, Booktube. So it's the 8th of September now. Last night I watched another apocalyptic movie. Uh, I chose After Earth, by, uh, starring Will Smith and his son Jaden Smith, also playing a father and son in the movie. I've never seen this before. Uh, this is, takes place 1,000 years after some cataclysmic event forced uh, humanity to leave Earth. And they sought out another planet where they ended up finding that they weren't the only ones there. There was some other kind of alien race that could sense fear and, and that's how they could find um, could find the humans on the planet and attack them. And uh, one day um, this particular fellow here ends up uh, being attacked by one and, and he's suddenly able to just let go of his fear and suddenly this creature can't find him. So they train uh, the rangers now to try and um, get rid of their fear and, and his son is trying to become a ranger as well but having difficulty of letting go of fear. Anyway, he brings him on a mission, and something happens, their ship crashes, and it lands on Earth. Now, it's been a thousand years, the, the planet has kind of re-evolved, uh, re you might say, so have the creatures on it, and they become much more dangerous. And um, they have to separate, uh, because the father ends up injured in the, ac in the accident and the crash, and the son has to make this perilous journey across the planet to reach a beacon. Um, to signal for help and it's just sort of a coming-of-age story for this young boy and the, the, the dangers he faces uh, on this planet and uh, other relationship to a strained relationship with the father having been away for so long but it was an overall really good movie um, I mean now you know action wise and stuff and, and watching what this kid goes through and, and things but uh, I, I enjoyed it a lot so Another apocalyptic movie under my belt <laughs> uh, I did just finish uh, the enemy today at work um, this is the first in a six book series. It's uh, for t pretty much for teens. It's a zombie type story, but it's weird because they don't really feel like zombies. Uh, there's some sort of plague that has infected grown ups. Uh, whether it was always already in everybody's system, and when they reach a certain age, they they turn and they kind of go mad and, and erupt in weird boils and stuff on their skin, and they they go uh, attacking other humans to eat them. And so the kids now have found themselves kind of in different pockets all over the place, um, you know, struggling to survive and battling the humans, uh, the, the grown-ups. And we're following a certain uh, group at the beginning um, in a Waitrose, which is apparently uh, a UK grocery store. That's where they've kind of held up. They're running out of food and supplies and are having to, you know, make runs out uh, in the surrounding areas, which is kind of dangerous. And, you know, they have the different different people in each in the group you know you've got your leader your fighter and your second in command and uh eventually uh, a young boy named jester shows up that's outside the gate saying there's a better place come with us um come with me there's a place at buckingham palace there's a bunch of us there we're you know we're gated we're safe we're growing our own food all this stuff it's a much better place and they decide to take the chance and go there uh and so you're following them on that kind of perilous journey and but the the whole thing with the the with the disease and how it uh, where it came from we don't know at least within this volume whether we'll find out later on we don't know yet but uh, because you know we're hearing it from the kids' point of view the kids would always be told by grownups what happened and there's no grownups there to tell them what happened or to figure it out uh, no scientists around so they're guessing themselves will they become sick when they reach a certain age who knows um, and it's not the same way like you know that if you you're bitten and you know. You might get sick from um, infection, but it's not like a, a zombie bites you and then you'll turn into a zombie. Or if you, you die, like in The Walking Dead, uh, you're ready. It, they call them Walking Dead because uh, even the people that aren't technically turned into zombies yet are already pretty much The Walking Dead. The moment they die, they will reanimate as zombies. So it doesn't quite seem to work that way uh, if, if someone dies in here. It's like the, the grown-ups are actually still alive. They're just diseased and mad and turn cannibalistic and dangerous. Um, they can be killed in fairly regular ways. You don't have to necessarily destroy the brain like in other zombie stories. You always have to kind of destroy the brain to kill them outright. So there are some differences and stuff, but uh, still, like I said, I, I enjoyed, I liked the characters. I, I found them interesting and, and pretty well-rounded. Well um, and 
yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see where the story, uh, the series goes. So I will eventually read the second one in the series, but not during this month because I have too many other different apocalypses I want to hit. So I think the next one I'm going to pick up is Exile by Steve Agarde. Now this is the one where some sort of global devastation um, has left everyone sort of struggling to survive. The things flooded and everything. And I've had this book for so long, so that's why I'm picking this one next. So I'm going to start this one later tonight. Who got hiccups? Nope. <laughs> Peekaboo. It's like a frog infestation. There's one, two, three, four, huge, five, and six. Oh, I think there's more down here. There's the seventh frog. Good lord, I think it's the apocalypse. <laughs> it's the end of days. Whoa, come back, froggy. Come go, frog. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god, this is crazy. Well, it's a beautiful sunny day. I was actually supposed to be at work today, but I called in sick because I woke up with a really stiff back and I thought, if I go to work, I'm just going to push myself and hurt myself more. So I'm just going to chill out today, do some reading, uh, continue with Exile by Steve Agari. This is the uh, young adult um, apocalyptic book that I'm not sure what caused the global devastation, but floods came and kind of washed out everything. and. It's a pretty interesting world. I love the cover of this book. It is just amazing. But I'm only on page 62, so chapter 4, just kind of getting used to what's going on. Haven't found out exactly what caused the devastation. I don't know if we will, if that's an important fact or not, but it's more like what's happening now that I guess is important. Um, <laughs> Skippy's underneath my chair right now. She's just chilling out a little bit. I'm hoping the sun will just kind of soak into my back a little bit, warm up the muscles. And there she goes. <laughs> oh well. So that's my plans for now. I'm going to just try and read. Uh, I've got tomorrow off as well, so that's good. I can give it a good, give my back a good rest. So onwards to reading. What you doing? You want back in, don't you? So I got today's paper, the Chicago Tribune, and in the arts and entertainment section, they've announced what the new chosen book will be for One Book, One Chicago. It's a city-wide reading event uh, that started 18 years ago with Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. So I open it up and I'm looking at the book and I'm thinking how perfect is a follow-up to my Apocalypse-a-thon for September. This is a nonfiction book called The Sixth Extinction by Elizabeth Colbert. It came out in 2014, described as a tour de force about mass species die-offs and the overwhelming evidence that we are currently living through such a period of steep, probably irreversible decline. Uh, the city's going to have all sorts of uh, events with speakers uh, running from October through February, including Dan Egan talking about his book The Death and Life of the Great Lakes, David Wallace Wells' The Uninhabitable Earth, <laughs> Within her book, um, it says she visits the last stand for frogs in South America. That's because all the frogs are in my driveway last night. Uh, and the caves in Vermont that are littered with the bodies of bats and succumbing to a mysterious disease. Um, and this all centers around uh, Trump as well. I love this. She could, she could write an addendum to her book um, and continue, as she said, for 100 more chapters. She said, uh, last week, Trump administration announced an end to energy-saving light bulb initiatives. Why? And just before that, he dismantled the Endangered Species Act. Why? It's like he seems to have to undo everything that's good. Anything that someone else created that wasn't his, you know, creation. It's bad. Let's get rid of it. I don't believe it. Chinese invented climate change. Whatever. But anyway, I just thought that was a weird coincidence.
think. Uh, let me see that hat. <laughs> let me see the hat, man. Look at that. What do you think? They didn't have juice boxes like this when I was a kid. It's appropriate video for this particular book of a drowned world. Ooh. Just a YouTube video I found from a channel called Sounds for Sleeping. And it's all about thunderstorms at sea, sounds for sleeping, relaxing, etc. Sounds great in headphones. This one, Rain Sounds and Thunder, a two hours sleep meditation and sound. So 321 relaxing. Uh, it's also rather nice if you have headphones on. Just hear that thunderstorm in the background, the rain coming down. It's quite nice. So it's uh, what, the 12th today. I'm on page 250, so I'm not really flying through this. Not that it's not good. It's pretty interesting. Uh, but I just haven't been in a reading mood. I don't know. I've been a bit lazy. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to try and press on today and read as much as I can before I have to go to work later today. And I work till closing, so I won't get back till about 11 o'clock tonight. So I uh, don't think I'll get a whole bunch of reading today done, but I'm just going to go ahead and upload this particular video, and then I'll start another vlog for the next couple of days. So see you guys later. Keep reading.